Versatility is not often a word we use in golf. However, it separates the good players from the better players. We all hit bad shots, but it's how we recover from them. And we need the right clubs to actually utilize that. From hitting out of the rough or even bunkers, just getting up and down, it's really important. Check the PGA Pros. Now this week, Taylorman have released a brand new high toe three wedge and it is designed for versatility. What does that actually mean? So I've got an entire set of the new Taylor-made high toe three wedges with me today, a 50, a 54, and a 58. They are all actually quite different to each other, but there are some big improvements improvements to the previous high toe 2, which I actually had in the bag for about 12 months or so. Designed for versatility, the main thing that I can see is the four-way cambered sole, meaning that from wherever you are, in the rough, the bunker, the water, wherever you guys put it, it's going to help you out and you're going to get some really nice turf or sand or water interaction. This four-way cambered sole gives it attributes of a wide sole and high bounce, but also you can clip it off tight lies for better players. That means it really is a multifunctional wedge and it's really going back to that versatility word that I'm going to use throughout this video. Sometimes you can think with wedges, they may be a little bit limited by that bounce because if you're high bounce, it's a bit different to low bounce. But with this four-way cambered sole, it's a little bit different. Let's hit some shots. Right, so I've got the 58 in my hands here from roughly 100 yards on the baked grass of the UK right now. I'll be interested to see if I do get any spin, but we're not really looking at it for these shots here, just to get a general feel in comparison to previous high toe iterations. The big difference between the 58, 54 and 50 is the actual design itself. When you're looking at the face of it, they look very similar, but named high toe, usually it's only been the 58 going to about 56 or so. You do now get the 54 offering that's actually in the high toe feature too. Not with the 50, but one thing I have noticed in the 50 is it looks a little bit more forgiving than previous iterations. If I'm comparing it to, let's say, a Titleist Vokey, it looks like the 50 has a little bit more offset. Good start. So it's getting a little bit of spin there. Now, I said I was going to be a bit surprised. With some fresh face grooves, you're always going to get a bit of forgiveness. But what I do like about the micro rib grooves is you can really almost feel the spin when you're hitting off it. TaylorMade have the micro rib grooves in some TaylorMade MG models as well, most recent one released last year. And you truly can feel when you hit it, you can really just feel the spin as soon as you're hitting it, which is a bit different from other models that I've tried. That's rubbish. I've hit these for about a week now, and the main difference I can notice is actually when we're going in further. So when we're hitting out of the rough and out of the bunker and things like that. Yeah, I feel pretty equidistant pairing these to the high toe too. I don't think there's that much difference here, except for maybe a slight increase in spin and a slightly lower ball flight. There is an improved CG placement for the high toe three as well. But when you see it, pretty much every wedge being released by all brands, they do say that. They always fine tune the CG every single time. But a slightly lower ball flight with more spin is pretty much what you'd expect from a new release. That's juicy. That's a good shot there. Similar to the last one. We'll hit one more just out of these ones, then we'll move on to a little bit closer around the greens because I think that's where this video is really going to flourish because you can see me hit some shots here, but it's pretty much the same as the other wedge. Yeah, not bad. I think we'll take those from all, not, not really close, but if you look at your dispersion from all those wedges from 100 yards, I'm pretty sure that's about tour average. Definitely not tour average. I'm not very good. Let's move a little bit closer. So just looking at the drone footage there, that was actually a little bit more impressive than I thought for the spin. It's downwind by about 10 to 15 mile an hour on really baked greens, and we're still getting a one hop and stop. So it's a really good ode there to the micro group grooves and just the overall performance from 100 yards. But when you're in a tough spot like this, we've got a tight lie, we've got a bit of green to work with, but it's a baked day, as I've said many times. It's not an easy shot. And you're probably just gonna hit one shot here. You're probably just gonna get a 58, fly it halfway, what are you going to do? I think with the high toe three, you can literally play at either of these three clubs and you're still going to get a pretty good result. So let's go first with the 58 here, the one which on paper has the highest bounce, still has that wide cambered sole, but I would say this one is obviously the most versatile, so I could hit any shot I want. But if we hit the stock shot with this, hitting it about 15 foot beforehand and just letting it roll out a bit. You play it to about 15 foot. Not the best shot from me, but I'm going to keep these all in because I'm not the best golfer in the world. If we switch now to a 54, this again looks very similar. It's got the high toe, you've got the full face of grooves. And what I can do here is pretty much the exact same shot, but hit it a little bit lower and I hope it nips a little bit more. Did and it's just rolled out there to about 15 foot or so. So pretty similar. But then if we even want to go to the 50, 
which I don't think a lot of people would actually hit a 50 in this situation because you're going to always, a lot of amateur golfers will take a high amount of loft. When you've got the wind really back into you, you don't think it's that good. But because I'm confident that I know how the ball's going to go out, because I know the turf interaction that I'm going to get with the four-way cambered sole, the spin that I'm going to receive as well with those micro rib grooves, I know what's going to happen. And that's worked out really well. The best one I've got there, I knew it wasn't going to spin as much and that's gone to about six foot or so. But this isn't that difficult, is it? This is still a dry fairway. What about if I make it even harder? Oh, why have I done this then? <laughs> we've got a bunker here, really not very nice rough, kind of fluffy rough. And then behind the green, we've got my camera and it goes down into some really deep rough. I may not be able to find it. This is where I think the 58s up to 60 really come into their own here because by having a really high toe feature, along with what I've mentioned already with the cambered sole and the micro rib grooves, it gives you options. Uh, my short game is not good enough to be attempted this. Sit, sit. Oh, not bad, just on the fringe. Sit, sit, that's the best one if it spins. Oh, it did, you see that there? So out of the rough, it still just trickled there into the fringe, but I had a really nice amount of spin on it from horrible, horrible rough. There you go, that's the smart shot that you can see there. I didn't really need to hit a massive flop, but I'm doing it for your enjoyment and also my humiliation, but hitting that, out of this rough into the grain, I'm still able to get through it. The strike mark there is slightly high and out of the toe, so definitely the high toe feature helped me there. Bunkers as well are a place where the high toe can really be utilized for the high toe feature, for the versatility. And I wouldn't really use the 50 in this, I'll get onto that at the end of this video, but now that you can use the 54 going up to the highest loft possible, it means that it doesn't just have to be green side bunkers, it can be from 30, 40, 50 yards, and it makes it a little bit easier because by having a full face of grooves, I know that from a technology perspective, it does make it a little bit easier, but even from a confidence point of view as well, by having that full face, it makes it, for me personally, makes it a lot easier to feel like I'm going to sweep under the ball. Oof, not bad. They're not getting much spin because there's nothing out in terms of sand in this bunker, but came out very nicely, a nice thump to it, which is what I do think you really do get with that wide cambered sole. That is a lovely shot. It just got the down slope, but you can see there, and I hope you hear the thump out of my microphone. Really came out nicely and just rolled onto the front there. Oh, that is the best of the lot. Happy that you've got the down line view because you can see how much that's popped up. Greens are baked, so it's gone to about 10 foot, but that's lovely. With longer bunker shots like this, from around 20 yards or so, I think that's when the 58 and the higher lofted high toe three comes into its own. You can see I'm kind of centralizing this video on the higher lofted clubs because that's the one I think should be an amateur's bag. This club really is multifunctional and it's not just by the aesthetics alone, it's because of the technology behind it. And it really means you can play different types of shots. That one there was a little bit high end rolled out. I'm not getting as much spin in bunkers, I will note that, but I don't think it's the club. I think it's more of the actual sand itself. That one there's come out a little bit lower, that one, and rolled on, different type of shot. And that one there was pretty standard. A little bit too much sound on that one, but that was the kind of equidistant, what I would say, of my actual loft there. That was pretty much a 58, not different in terms of lower or higher. Three different options, three okay results, but you can kind of get what I'm talking about. Despite there being a lot of options in the high toe three, 50 degrees all the way up to 60, 62 degrees, I think the higher lofted ones are what the amateur golfers should be looking at. Having a full face of grooves with the new technology that TaylorMade have introduced in this iteration means that it's a forgiving club that's gonna give you a lot of consistent results. You can see in the testing that I've shown you today that I may not be the best short game player in the world, but I am consistent. I'm hitting them all in a pretty similar spot. A full face of grooves isn't anything, you know, groundbreaking. We've had them in Callaway, we've had them in TaylorMade, had them in other brands as well, but it's certainly is something that amateur golfers should consider because it provides you with a lot of forgiveness across the entire face. I don't think any golfer watching hits the middle of the club face every single time. That's why I'm not telling you to get an entire set. Having, let's say, a combo set of the MG3s with a 50 degree of the MG3 and a 54 in either the high toe three or the MG3 and then getting a short game extraordinaire with that high lofted four-way camber with this high toe three will mean that your short game options are better than ever. If you have any questions regarding the new high toe three guys let me know down in the comments and if you did enjoy this video hit a like as well. If you are new to Golf Magic smash that subscribe button because we've got plenty of content coming soon. Till the next video guys I'll see you later.